Up until recently, I've never baked bread in my life and there are things I wish I'd known before I started making my first bread, which is why I'm gonna start with this rather than dive right through in the video. When I first started in my sardo bread journey, I thought it was all about the sardo starter, but it's not. Rather, it's a play of how all the ingredients interact well together. First off, let's talk about flour. The kind of flour you use will change the taste and texture of your bread. And they all have different kinds of properties in terms of how it handles water or moisture. And this leads me to discuss about water. How much water you use will affect how you can handle the dough. I made a mistake of using too much water my first time and so I ended up with a sticky mess that I didn't know what to do with. And I tried to fix that by adding a little bit more flour or a lot more flour and in the end, I ended up with a bread that was so dense and heavy as a brick. As a complete beginner, I would recommend using a recipe with less water. Familiarize yourself with how it handles, and once you get comfortable with that, then you can slowly add more water into your recipe. And if you're interested, you can watch out for my next video wherein I'm using one recipe to bake bread every day, and I use different flour to show you how the dough texture changes with that. I have 250 grams of water already sitting in the bowl. I added 5 grams of salt. I gave it a stir to help get the salt dissolved. I now place the bowl in a weighing scale to add 130 grams of sourdough starter. Once the sourdough starter is in the bowl, I used my fingers to blend it well with the water. This way, your starter is evenly incorporated into your dough quite easily. Once the starter is evenly incorporated, into the water, then it's time to add the flour. I have already measured out 380 grams of flour earlier, so I simply added it in. Now, you can use any kind of flour that you prefer or whatever is available to you. For this video, I'm using Weizen Volkorn flour or what is known as whole wheat flour. This is a no-need recipe, so what I'm just doing is using my hands and fingers to make sure that the water and the flour gets well incorporated together and try to make sure that you don't leave chunks of dry flour in as that can dry up later and becomes hardened. Also, although you can double up this recipe, I do not recommend it as it does get harder to incorporate well together. As you can see, this dough is still quite sticky but not so much so that it's unmanageable. What I did was just I tried to remove as much of the dough as I possibly can, put it back in, and then anything left behind, I just completely rinsed off. I then covered this baby up, let it rest for 1-2 to two hours for gluten to form, or in other words, for the texture to change. If you look at my freeze frame closely up ahead, you can see the noticeable difference in how the dough looks. Not only that, the dough actually feels different. So go ahead, give your dough a touch and try to get a sense of feel and how different it is. Although the dough is less sticky now, it is still quite sticky if you just dive right in. It's going to just stick in your fingers. What I did was to slowly try and get this dough to release from the bottom of the bowl by patting it out little by little. Others actually suggest using the water technique. Get a bowl of water, dip your fingers in the water, and then dive right into the dough. And yes, the dough will not stick to your fingers, but for me, it made my fingers so slippery, I was unable to get a good grip of the dough. So go on right ahead. Give both techniques a try and use whatever works best for you. The use of more water here is not going to hurt your dough or your bread. However, do avoid using flour as that can make your dough and bread denser. This is a no-need recipe. However, the dough still needs to form gluten and strengthen itself. So we shall help the formation of that by giving this dough a stretch and fold once we've released it from the bowl. Doing this is rather easy. Just stretch the dough as far as you possibly can and fold it over in itself. And repeat this from all four directions. Once you're done folding, it's time to give your dough a semblance of a shape. You can do this by forming it into a ball. 
I found doing this quite relaxing and calming for me and it gave me a better feel of the dough. However, I have come to realize that this is not always necessary, especially when dealing with a dough that has a lot more water since it's just quite sticky and it's sticking everywhere. Also, I have since ditched the silicone pad as that one's just moving all around the place. I just make sure to use a table that I have disinfected and make sure to be clean. It's now time to put your dough back into the bowl. Cover it and then let it sit for about four hours. I mean, and if it's cold where you are, then you can extend it to about six hours or at least until the dough has risen to about double its size. There are recipes that says to let your dough rise for 10 hours, 12 hours or longer. And that's okay for them, but not for me, since I found a dough to have gotten quite sticky and a lot more difficult to work with again. After allowing your dough to grow as much as it possibly can, it's time to get rid of some of the air in it. You can do this by folding it over on itself again. And I also took the opportunity to actually add the seeds that I love so much into the dough. Once you're done folding your dough on itself again, it's time to give it its final shape. And you need a form shaping container for this. Most of the bakers online is going to use their banneton. And if you're a complete beginner, you're not going to have that. And that's totally all right. So what you need is any container that's big enough to hold your dough, as well as have enough room for it to grow a little bit. It could be a loaf pan if you're a baker. If not, you can use any bowl. It could be round, square, or whatever shape you have. Your dough is going to stick to your container, so to avoid that, make sure to give your container a proper coating of flour. If you use too much, that's okay. You can dust it off later. My love for seeds come in handy as it's an extra layer of protection that prevents my dough from sticking to the container. What I do is just give the top portion of my dough a good layer of seeds. After giving your dough a layer of seeds, if you chose that, give it a good coating of flour from top and bottom and then make sure to rest your dough top side down onto the container. You can then cover the bowl and let your dough rest and rise for the final time. You have two options here. Let your dough rest for one to two hours before baking it, or in my case, I just popped it in the fridge, ready to be baked the next day. Don't forget to preheat your oven to 250 degrees centigrade or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the average maximum temperature for a home oven. If you have a Dutch oven, that's great. If you don't have it, it's totally fine with this particular recipe. And if you want to add more water, I can give you tips and tricks for that on my next video. I've already done that. I just need to edit it. Cutting the top portion of your dough is totally optional. You're basically just directing it where to grow. If you have a Dutch oven, great. If not, it's not the end of the world. Instead of doing 20 minutes at 250 degrees centigrade, reduce it to 15 minutes and then lower the temperature to 200 degrees and bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. You're probably wondering what's going on, so let me explain something. This dough does not have so much water, so it's a little bit firmer and able to hold its shape. The Dutch oven would actually have helped it grow higher. In this case, we didn't have that, so the bread just kind of spread a little bit sideways and did not grow as high. So it's a little bit more flat compared to others. If you're interested in making your bread grow higher without a Dutch oven, I have tips and tricks for that on my next video. I'm done shooting that. I just need to edit it. Don't you just love hearing that sound? I know I do. Happy eating, guys.